My name is David Willard, and uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, I'm 72 years old, uh, or at least 72 years young. I cannot honestly remember a time that I was not part of church. Always loved the church. In those days, church was a very important focal point, especially for rural communities. We were always evangelical, primarily Southern Baptist in the great portion of my life. Back again when I was probably 16 or 17 years of age, in those days, uh, Southern Baptists had a little bit of a, a program approach to their year, I guess, uh, uh, where they would bring in some of the youth to uh, have a special Sunday where the youth took over the music, the youth would, would uh, teach the Sunday school class. And I can remember being tremendously afraid, thinking, oh my goodness, I can't really do anything like that. But I said, okay, they finally talked me into it. So I can remember getting up with fear and trembling, trying to deliver a little message. Scared silly. It didn't take me long, which I thought was interesting because I like to talk a lot. But uh, probably 15 minutes later, I had said all I was going to say, and they were sort of staring back at me with amazement. <laughs> I guess they were amazed that I was able to even speak, especially for 15 minutes. They said, man, we, that, was, that was really much more than we expected. And it got me to thinking a little bit, I guess, about how I could relate to the church. And from that point on, uh, as I matured, I began to hold and be asked to hold different offices within the church. Uh, from there, I eventually became a deacon. Uh, in some churches, became an elder. And finally, I guess, when we moved back to Southern Illinois, many, many, many years later, still having an intense love for the church, I accepted a call from the First Baptist Church in Marion, Illinois, uh, to be a part of their staff, on a, at least on a uh, part-time basis. I think it's just simply the love of what I call the ecclesial church. The church, after all, is the very body of Christ. Uh, that's where we most intimately, in spite of all the human difficulties, in spite of all the, the political difficulties that we might encounter from time to time, that gathering of God's people, that authentic gathering of God's people is still our best point that we can experience, I think, the reality of Christ here on this planet. Really, it's even the music has become extremely shallow, saying very little, repeating a whole lot, emphasizing the experiential beat, but the shallowness of discipleship uh, the reluctance to think, the preference for a emotional experience only, that's a worry for me, I guess. Because the reality is that the culture is changing, and unless we're able to speak to that culture, if we're unable to take up the language of that culture a little bit, we're going to be pretty irrelevant as far as a Christian faith is concerned. One of the things, of course, I would urge uh, upon the young reformed, work to become competent in your understanding of scripture. Uh, that is, after all, even in the Southern Baptist evangelical world, uh, uh, something of critical importance. The authority of the scriptures. Try at the same time to be competent in, in, in understanding what's happened to our culture. And that is, after all, what the body of Christ really provides, is the ability to sit down with a brother and sister 
and say, come let us reason together. Let us think about this. Uh, come and let us pray together and think about the, the failures and the agonies of life as well as the joys and the wonderment of it all and certainly the wonderment of that which is yet to come will become not shallow but take your faith seriously and understand it beyond just a superficial warm fuzzy feeling understand the culture understand the language the way it's thinking and come up with some creative ways to be able to speak your faith to that culture and to do it honorably and not in some sort of stupid stereotypical way uh, I think that's what I would give as an old old man uh, and would hope that they would become even those crazy Calvinists uh, reformed uh, uh, I would urge that upon them as well